Hello. Don't I look studious like this? You know, if you give a, a man or a woman or a child a cell phone, oh my God, you start messing with it. And before you know it, you have like rabbit ears and bunny ears and button noses. And now I look like I'm a, like a, kind of like a rocker ex Chippendale. I look like a Chip Munkendale, don't I? <laughs> Boy, you give someone a cell phone and one of those apps, and all you do is press buttons, and kind of look at yourself going, I think this is appropriate with these fine glasses and that cool button, what's that called, a bow tie? All right, what's going on, planet Earth? I'll be Corey, and you guys just be cool, man. All right, I'm cruising down the road. I can't really look down at my phone as much as I'd love, but I'm going to see one of my best pals up uh, at the old hospital on the hills. Yeah, I'm eating. So Val, I'm hurrying, and Jeff, if you see me. All right, I'm cruising. I had to do something very important about five minutes ago. I had to go buy milk and taco shells and 15 Rockstar Energy drinks. God, I can't stop drinking those things. I get physicals every year, though. I buy the ones that are uh, sugar-free, calorie-free, those Rockstar, are they zeros? And I'm not kidding you. They, As far as, like, cholesterol or heart attack or heart, pre heart pressure, <laughs> I've, I've seen no difference whatsoever just sipping sugar-free energy drinks pretty seriously for, like, 15, no, they came out. I remember, God, if I remember right, my first Rocks, or no, it was Red Bull. They came out around 1999 or 2000. I was at a radio station uh, called The Blaze, and I was doing the morning show with the lovely Mickey Fox and my producer, Mr. Clean Matt Vance. Rest in peace, my brother. And I remember the GM or the sales guy came in and said, hey, there's, there's this new drink. It's called Red Bull. And you're going to get a little fridge put in your studio. And you, Mickey, and Mr. Clean, you guys are going to open it up live on, you know, live on the air. You guys are going to take a swig and give your comment. Now, what they forgot to say is, even if you don't like it, like it. They're a sponsor. They spend money at the radio station. I, I wasn't made aware of that. So I, it was like 7... And what's funny is, like, I'm right at an intersection, literally the, the Blaze. If you guys are in Salt Lake, you guys remember 1023 The Blaze. The studio is just right up about a mile from where I'm talking right now, coincidentally. Kind of weird. Coincidence? <laughs> so I remember, this is like 2000 or maybe 2001. I mean, it was before the World Trade Centers came, uh, came tumbling down. So this might have been around 2000. But God, I'll never forget, I, I'm just on the air. And I open up a Red Bull. And all three of us do it together. You know, me, Mickey, and, and Matt Vance. And and we just look at each other and we're like, you know, a Red Bull, I don't think it tastes delicious the first time. Just like probably your first beer, your first tequila, your first, I don't know, cigarette. But I just remember, I thought it was almost a joke. Because by the time I I swallowed, you know, I, I swallowed the, uh, I swallowed the Red Bull and I just went, God, this it kind of tastes like aspirin you know what I mean like if you kind of like put it in your mouth a Red Bull you know I know there's different flavors now but this was before the sugar-free ones this is just the normal can that's like you know kind of a royal blue color but I just remember going oh my god this kind of I think I called it goat piss which is really not the best definition when a sponsor comes in gives your radio station money you're supposed to go oh my god this Red Bull is amazing this is delicious Boy, I'm going to buy a bunch of Red Bull, and boy, after I exercise, I'm just going to get me an ice cold Red Bull. So, I remember I got off the, the air about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I was always nervous 10 minutes after I got off the air, because like from 10 to 10.10, 10, I was always waiting for the general manager or the owner of the station or just somebody to chew my ass out about something I did from 6 in the morning till 10 in the morning. And yeah, you know, by 10.05, I was pretty much getting called two floors down to where the general manager's office was. And he was a good friend of mine, uh, thank goodness. So about 10.10, I walked downstairs, walked in the general manager's office, and he's like, Corey, next time we have a sponsor, give us money 
so we can operate this radio station and pay your salary, don't identify the product as goat piss. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me that? I mean, I can pretend to like dog poop if they're, you know, giving us money to pay our bills. So I'll never forget. Uh, and you got to love it, man. Um, you got to love, you know, Red Bull, don't you? Because right now, you know, what, uh, vod Red Bull or vodka bowls, aren't they probably the most, you know, like you got Subway sandwiches and you got McDonald's for rubber hammer. Boy, when it comes you know, to a nightclub, a vodka bowl, boy, didn't Red Bull just knock it out of the park? Hold on, I'm going to turn my, my phone beeper off. I can tell. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. I I know my, um, I know it was beeping right there. I just turned off my applications there, beeping. So, thank goodness for Rockstar. Not only are they a bigger can, they're a better value. They make calorie-free and shit free ones and these wild berries these bright blue just got another grape actually gosh darn these things are delicious and I'll tell you if I ever have pass out from heart attack you guys probably know why that's right good old rock star energy drinks all right well anyway yeah I'm, I'm heading up the hill again one of my best pals in the world Jeff He's uh, getting take, get taken care of by LDS Hospital right now. So, yeah, me and my pal Val, we're racing there. I'm in my truck. She's in her truck. And me, I thought it'd be in my best interest to put on a bow tie and some sexy nerd glasses and go live on Facebook and kind of chat to you fine folks while I'm cruising down the road. I don't even know what today is. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? I don't know. Uh, tonight's a good, good concert here. I'm in Salt Lake City, if you guys don't know where the heck I'm at. Angels and Airwaves are playing. That's a badass band. Isn't it like half Blink-182? Blink-182? God, I have a hell of a time saying that. But it's sold out, so obviously Angels and Airwaves. That's the name of the band. It's not like Angels and the Airwaves or the Angels are opening up for the Airwaves. But if you guys are into alternative rock or new wave rock or whatever the hell you call it now, um, most of the concerts are kind of, they're fading out here in Salt Lake City as far as the outdoor ones. I mean, it's hot today. I'm in a tank top. Like right now, I I think it's 7 o'clock at night. It's about 7, 8 o'clock here in Salt Lake. But I'm in a tanky toppy. And man, it's like a beautiful night. Right now, my truck says it's 75 degrees outside. So if you're a Salt Laker or if you live anywhere where the cold comes real fast in October, we're all outside barbecuing and taking advantage of being outside. You know, screw all the Netflix and all the movies and all that crap. That can wait on, you know, you can watch that anytime. I just recommend getting your butt outside and enjoy the weather because when it's February, aren't we all bitching and moaning? All of us folks that have snow and cold. I actually like the mountains. I don't mind the snow in the mountains. I, I live at the bottom of giant mountains. You know, they're the Wasatch Mountains, I guess, but I can get to Park City in 30 minutes, Snowbird, Brighton, Alta. I think ski resorts and ski towns are fun. I mean, sure, your truck or car might get a little dirty with some snow on it or something, but, I mean, who gives a shit? It's fun just to go up there and walk around, see all the tourists, all the guests. But for some reason, have you ever had a hamburger up at a ski resort? Or if you drink beer, I don't drink beer, but my friends swear that beer tastes better when you go to a ski resort, even though the beer is twice as much as it should be. And... Yesterday I had a survey, I was just listening to Howard in the morning and they were kind of going over the best cheeseburgers in the world. And I think, if I remember right, five guys, and this is just in America, like what's the most delicious, kind of a chain, not like a, a single burger shop, like, you know, because every single town has like a burger that's probably better than like, let's say a McDonald's or a Wendy's or a Whopper. But i got to check it out. It's called Five Guys. Do you guys, I'm, I think most of my friends have been there and they agreed that it's similar to like an in and out But I think in America, I've never even heard of Five Guys. I even went there the other day with my with my pal Val and I was so disinterested in their food. I, I thought it looked kind of like cafeteria, so I didn't even get it. I'm like, nah, I'll just, I'll just eat later, you know. So I didn't realize that that had like one of the most famous burgers in the world. So Five Guys came in at number one. And I, I've barely even heard of that place. And now i got to at least try it. 
And what I forgot to do today is I was going to go to Burger King and try one of their, oh, oh, the Impossible, the Impossible Whopper. Um, is it soy? It says it's made out of plants, but the burger, I guess, itself, it's on the grill. I guess it tastes nice and charbroiled and everything else. But if it's made out of plant, I mean, I don't give a shit. Um, I love hamburger. You know, I know it's, uh, I try not to eat as much beef as I used to and stuff. I know when you get older, you should watch it, but I, I want to try one of those impossible burgers. And some of my friends have had them and they said, you know what? They're not bad. If no one even really told you, you probably couldn't even tell that it was made out of a plant. And I don't even know what that means. I just went to Wikipedia last night. I was doing a live video and I just looked up impossible Whopper on online and it just said it's a plant based patty. You know, and I like plants. I like Robert Plant. He's in concert in a few days here in Salt Lake. <laughs> man, there's some cool plants. I don't smoke pot, but man, if I sold it, I'd love plants even more. I do have a bamboo plant. I got that when my son passed away, and it's getting large. I mean, bamboo grows pretty fast. Do you guys agree? You know those little designer bamboo things you get like at Walmart or like places that sell, you know, obviously plants, but it's just in a little glass tube. It has like, you know, like a bamboo, is it the stem or the stalk? And man, it bamboo grows pretty quick. It, it's by far the fastest growing plant I've ever had. So I'm kind of excited about that. And it looks dark green, I mean, just perfectly green. So I just put water in it once a week. And then I buy this vitamin, it's like vitamin water you can get like at Home Depot or just about anywhere. Just go like in the plant section and say, hey, do, do they have like vitamins or something you can put in the water to maybe increase the chance that the plant's badass and it doesn't they, they go rotten and die like in a year but bamboo i'm a big fan of the old bam bam majera wham bam thank you ma'am and bamboo i hope it lasts forever because i got it as a gift from one of my great relatives when my son passed away in december so yeah it's looking really good i'm totally excited um at just how green and badass that thing looks so yeah i'm just in traffic up to my ass you guys want to see how exciting my night is? Um, I'm heading up uh, to the avenues right now. You know where I drive by? Uh, I'm going to a big hospital up in Salt Lake. I drive by the house where Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped. And I know that's kind of sad. I don't want to promote something negative. But, yeah, I was up at the hospital, and I almost was at Elizabeth Smart's house, and I had to take a left to go to the hospital. <laughs> God, that, you know, it's like I've lived on and off here in Salt Lake City forever. But it's kind of weird when you go by a famous house. Uh, I mean, God, I, there's so many famous stories up in the avenues where I am. I'm not going to say exactly where, just for privacy of my buddy and, and whatnot. But I'm just high up in the mountain in the avenues. And if you live here in Salt Lake City, everybody knows where I'm at. But <clears throat> if you live in Salt Lake City, they used to have Gravity Hill. And that's a hill where it looks like you're going uphill. And if you park your car, or if you put your car in neutral and let it sit... Even though you're going downhill, your car starts floating uphill. And it's called Gravity Hill. It's like there's no gravity. And it's crazy. It's right by the Capitol. And you know what? Like, if I remember tonight when I'm leaving the hospital, or next time I'm up, I'll have to go to Gravity Hill and I'll show you. I'll put my truck in neutral. And my truck's heavy as shit. It's probably 7,000 pounds. I'll park you guys can see. I'll even get out. I'll do the best I can to document it. I'll put my phone on forward so you guys can see out the windshield. And then I'll put it down in neutral so I can show you I'm not faking it. I'm not putting the brake on. I'm not, you know, giving it gas or doing something funny. But I will. I'll put my truck in neutral and I will be going uphill. And when I put it in neutral, my truck will start floating uphill. Is that spooky? I'm scared now. I don't think I'm going to go up there now. I'm kind of scared. Okay, everyone knows about Gravity Hill. Another famous site up in Salt Lake City where I'm going is called Emo's Grave. And if you're from Salt Lake and kind of older, you guys probably know these these stories and these tales because all of us used to go to State Street, go uptown and just party every Friday and Saturday night. So all of us kids, we had to come up with stuff to do. Well, there's a big gray. There's there's some spooky cemeteries here in Salt Lake. That's why they film all the Halloweens here, because we have all those big, old, scary, badass cemeteries that are kind of great, you know, for thrillers. 
I mean, we have brand new cemeteries too, of course, but there's a legendary one up in town, and I don't know if it's just called Salt Lake City Cemetery. I don't, I don't even know the name of the darn thing, but it's called Emo's Grave, and it's a huge, um, like a, is it a mausoleum where there's like a big cement building, and then if you're family, you can open up the door, and your all of your family is inside. Is that a mausoleum? Well, anyway, on Emo's grave, you go, <clears throat> you go up to it, and at night, you always go to a cemetery at night. And I'll do this, by the way, too, because I know Halloween's coming up, and I like to go live and and do crazy stuff. I'll I'll go to Emo's grave. You know, I'll, I'll do Gravity Hill in the daytime. That way, you can see my truck float uphill in neutral. But then on Emo's grave, I'll go there at night, and. When you look inside the mausoleum, you know, like with a, oh, what is it, like a lighter, that's probably the easiest, a bigger lighter. I don't know if a little Bic will do it, but if you get like one of those, you know the big ones where you light a fireplace with, they're like four or five bucks when you're waiting in line, but you know, you, you, it's almost like a gun and it's like a big torch. I want to do that, but I'll stick it in the window area of Emo's grave. And when you look in there, and I'll do the best I can to hold my phone up, you can see like like the image of a person staring back at you. And it freaks you the F out. I'm trying to not say the F word as much. So if I say F, that means you know what I mean. So there's Emo's Grave in Salt Lake City. There's Gravity Hill. I can show you the park that's used in all the Halloween movies a lot. I'll do that the same night because actually Emo's Grave is just down the street about, got literally two blocks from where they film a lot of the Halloween scenes. Because the park is cool, it has all these old houses in the background and you know, of course you have to have the late at night running through the neighborhood screaming because some guy, you know, in a William Shatner mask, running one mile an hour. Do you notice that, you know, the best scary movies they walk after you like walking dead. It's not the running dead. If I remember right, isn't it the walking dead? Crazy, huh? I don't think Jason ran that much. You know, he kind of like took a little stroll. Leatherface, he kind of ran a little bit. Texas Chainsaw Massacre cat. He was kind of in shape. You know, he had some boots on and stuff, but you know, he did a good job kind of hanging in there. <laughs> Freddy Krueger, God, he didn't do shit. He just kind of appeared in your dreams and God, what other ones? I'm trying to think what horror movies, like Pinhead, Hellraiser, uh, the show Saw. There's really not a lot of thriller, scary monsters in good shape. The Blob, Frankenstein. No one's really in shape. I'm trying to think. Maybe that's my next million dollar idea. I'm going to hit the old... Uh, Maybe I'll hit the pen and ink, and I'll come up with a scary monster that's really athletic. And what he does is he runs after you. The only one I can remember is, like, in The Terminator. Remember the policeman? Like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Linda, what's her name? Sarah Connor. You know, they'd be, they'd be driving or running away, and then that one cop, Patrick something. I remember his act, the actor, his name was Patrick something, but he's, like, the only guy. I remember in Terminator, his motorcycle... Like, didn't he, like, wreck his motorcycle, and then he just, you look in the back, and all of a sudden, he's just running after you. He's probably the only good, exercised, good cardio villain of all time, is the policeman in Terminator Part 1. So, all right, what's going on, everyone in the chat room? I can't really see you much. I'm just cruising down the road. Um, I'm taking a back way up to the avenues. Here, I'll flip my camera. I'll just hold it up. Maybe you guys can see where I'm at or what I'm doing. Can you guys see okay now? I'll just hold my phone up like I'm shaving. If I'm going north, this is very boring, I know. But I'm just killing time. The road that I was on, they just dug up. I, I went the stupidest way. I didn't realize that they dug up all the sugar house area, so I just added 15 minutes. Going to my darn trip. Yeah, yeah. It's like 7-something. I can't remember what time it is here. I think it's like going on uh, 8 o'clock in Utah anyway. But yeah, this 75 degrees at night, it sure in the hell ain't going to last. This tank top at night in almost October, 
very rare. I'm going to, like the other night, I even had to put on one of those little ponchos like Jeff Spicoli wears. And if anyone knows me, tank tops and shorts, I don't even like to wear shoes. I was born, I don't know why, I, I guess I probably should eventually move to a beach area. Or to Cabo San Lucas, or somewhere, somewhere where there were sandy beaches. But Utah's pretty dang fun, man, that's why I like coming back here. I've lived all over, though, I lived in Vegas for nine years, and went and did some movie work down in good old Los Angeles in the late 90s, and born and raised in a little town called Santa Barbara. Boy, what affordability Santa Barbara is, as everybody laughs home of Oprah Winfrey and all these other people that have billions of dollars. One billion. All right, I'm at an intersection. Let me see. Who's there? Hey, Carrie Dotson. What's up? And my friend May. Mayday, Mayday. How are you, May? Oh, hey, Jennifer. Cool. How's uh, New Orleans? All right. And Joyce is there. Hey, Joyce. And Darlene and Jessica. All right. And Lynn. And Joy Beza. All right, Joy. How you doing? Good to see everybody. Hey, Christy, how are you doing? And Julie, my friend from Santa Barbara. That's funny. I was just talking about Santa Barbara. Are you still there, Julie? I mean, if you can answer later, I can't really see the answers, but yeah, that was funny. I just talked about Santa Barbara. Remember how affordable it was in the 70s and the 80s when we were there? <laughs> now, all of our houses in Santa Barbara, they're probably like, you know, 97,000, maybe 149,000. You can't even buy a piece of grass for 150000 in Santa Barbara now. Now you got to have $1 million. And you can live in Santa Barbara with my lovely friend, Julie. Let's see, you got married, huh? Julianne. Okay, Lindman. And then you go by Coons. That's your married name. I'm so glad that you and my friends that I've known forever, that when you guys get married, you keep your last names. And then maybe your new married names. Because... I mean, if girls get married, God, I'll never know. You know, some of my bestest friends, I want to look up on Facebook to see if they're still, you know, in Santa Barbara or, you know, God, now at our age, it's like, God, are we still alive or not? It's kind of scary, huh, Julie? And any of my other friends that are just listening, maybe my Utah friends, but man, it kind of makes you nervous. I'm almost 53 and boy, with social media, if somebody passes away, you know, within what, 40, maybe 40 seconds. So yeah, Santa Barbara's fun. I if I come to Santa Barbara and you're down there, Julie, I don't know where you're at. I'll have to look at your Facebook and see what city you're in. But I, I can't believe how many people are still in Santa Barbara area. Uh, you know, Goleta or Santa Barbara. But it's so cooler even, you know, down by Montecito or whatever. But, God, yeah, that'd be a riot just to see some of my buddies from, like, 1975. Julie knew me when I was, like, a chubby-cheeked guy. I wanted to have longer hair, but then my mom would buzz all my hair off for the summer then I'd grow my hair out. Then by school, my mom would like buzz all my hair off again. And I'm like, God, mom, it's like we live down the street from David Cassidy and all these badasses in Santa Barbara, but God forbid you're in grade school. And then I played sports so that, you know, the, you know, buzzing all your hair off. So, you know, if you're sweating, playing, oh God, what football, baseball, I just wanted the surfer life. I didn't care about the haircut. I'm like, God, I want to look like a Z boy on a skateboard. I don't want to like look like some nerd playing baseball, but you know, every year, start growing my hair, then man, there's my mom zapping my hair off, so, yeah, it's fun. Hey, David, what's going on, brother, and Carlos, and Angel Smith, hey, Angel, hey, Robert, what's happening, and my buddy, Chad Norass, what's going on there, Chadster, hey, Chad, if you're in Salt Lake City, maybe you should come with me to Gravity Hill, and then we should go up to Emo's grave, too. Chad and I have a really bad story with my producer, JT Hiskey, a year or so ago, we were up at a cemetery, kind of by Emo's grave, and we had a real person, probably on massive drugs, attack my truck. And poor Chad, Chad, I'll just tell the story since you went on K Bear and told everybody. But yeah, Chad was sitting in the front of my truck, JT was in the back seat, and I had a psycho guy come up to my truck yelling at me and everybody like a zombie. And then he started beating the windows, broke my, you know, broke one of my side windows, and then. And then he, he got inside my truck and started choking Chad, like for real. I'm not even being funny right now. So yeah, I had to get out and I had to kind of take care of this uh, kid. I had to show him, that don't mess with a 220 pound pissed off 52 year old. But that little bitch ass 22 year old, he won't be doing any more zombie up there, I'll tell you, not, not to my truck. So yeah, that was crazy. But yeah, Chad in the chat room, I can't see you guys right now because I'm driving, but 
If you're in Salt Lake, Chad, let me know right now if you can hear me, and then maybe I can pick you up, and let's go up at night and do Emo's Grave. And if any zombies start breaking my windows again, believe me, <laughs> oh, I don't think the chances of that are happening again. But you know those damn college kids, they all party, they do drugs, they they think life is just a, a, a party, and and I don't give a shit what they do, but boy, if someone's going to come up and break my window, man, that takes that takes King Kong balls if they don't think I'm going to have to rearrange their goddamn face. So I guarantee you that kid ain't going to be doing that again. But yeah, Chad, if you're in town, let me know. You know, in the next day or so, maybe we can go up to Emo's Grave, Gravity Hill. Maybe we'll go up to the cemetery. Let's just walk around and do something like an evil, like, you know, we'll do evil videos. Or I'll buy you a mask. And I'll have you running around the cemetery screaming and shit and we'll make our own little mini movies since they film all the Halloween movies here why don't we get y'all self in a movie we'll make you famous that's right Halloween 15 starring Chad Norris also known as Rad Chad Salt Lake City's greatest finest actor all right well I'm almost at my buddy's place he's probably watching my dumb video right now and my buddy Val probably beat me because I went the long way. God, I'm so sick of. No, oh, I just see. Doesn't it seem like wherever you go, there's just always roads dug up? And I don't know if they're. I used to think they're like burying cable for cable TV, but now everything is streamed over Wi-Fi. So I'm like, God, why are they just digging up streets everywhere in Salt Lake City? I think they do it just to give themselves jobs. And I can't wait till they get rid of those stupid scooters. See those? Oh, I hate those things. Because I know if one of those rental scooters hits my truck and scratches it or dents it, it's going to be some shithead named Billy with no insurance or no nothing. And I don't even know how that works. You know, and I, I have nothing against scooters. You know, I'm a skateboard BMX fan. But, you know, everybody rents those scooters and they usually, like, haul ass and go around traffic and cut across intersections. And, yeah, I'm not a big fan of those rental, those rental scooters. I, I can't believe there's not more deaths because, I mean, every day if you drive a lot, you always see those scooter guys probably, you know, getting hit at an intersection or something. But I don't know. Just don't hit me. If you guys get ran over by a truck, you know, enjoy, enjoy the metal. Enjoy that heavy metal sandwich. All right. Well, I'm almost at my buds. Yeah, we... Uh, yeah, Jeff and I, we went skydiving the other day, having a good time. That was fun. So, yep, we're going to go. And what's cool about where I'm going, I'm not going to say on what floor, but you can get free drinks. And I didn't know that until uh, last time I was there with Val. But, man, if you'd like a little uh, cup of water or maybe a little Diet Dr. Pepper. Kind of hiding my phone right now. Okay, there you go. I don't want people to think I'm talking on my cell phone. Especially a police officer, because I know it's like a $500 ticket if you're caught um, texting on your phone. You're allowed to video. Like what I'm doing right now, you can video all you want. You just can't manipulate manipulate your phone. You know, you can't text and do all this stuff or Facebook. So, yeah, if you ever, you know, driving around, you, know, you can just hold your phone up to your dash or, you know, just, you know, there's 